Welcome back to Staying Fervent. I'm Tracy, where we encourage you to stay fervent in God. Thank you so much for tuning in today and staying fervent with me. On this channel, I encourage you a lot about staying close to God, walking close to God, and drawing close to God. In an upcoming series, I'm going to be talking about clinging to God and how I cling to God, and I hope it blesses you. Before I talk about how I cling to God, I wanted to talk about some of the giants in the faith and how they clung to God. Jesus himself clung to the Father. Tightly and closely, he was an amazing, a show enough prayer warrior. He obeyed God's will over his own. He said, not my will, Lord, but yours be done. He came for a purpose and he carried it out. God was so pleased with Jesus Christ that he opened up the heaven and he said these words, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. This is the goal, to be pleasing in God's sight. Jesus clung to the Father. The disciples often searched for Jesus, and they would find him in prayer, in a mountaintop praying, off to the side praying, always dedicating time to the Father in prayer, always talking to the Father. He told us before he left this earth, he said we ought to pray and not faint. He encourages us to do the same. He encourages us to talk to the Father. He encourages us to always be communicating and talking with God. This is clinging. The second giant of the faith that I want to discuss who clung to God was King David. David clung to God with all of his might, even before he became a king. Even in the fields as a young shepherd boy, on the job, he clung to God. In the fields, he sung, offered praises to God, made music and melody and worship unto the Lord. God was his heart. David loved God so much that he said, one day in God's courts was better than a thousand days somewhere else. Oh my goodness. He said it was better to dwell with God just one day than to be a thousand days somewhere else. And I love the way the message version put this verse. This is what it said. One day spent in your house, this beautiful place of worship, be thousands spent on Greek island beaches. I'd rather scrub floors in the house of my God than to be honored as a guest in the palace of sin. David was saying, I want to be with God. I don't want to be anywhere else. He was saying there is nowhere else that can compare to the presence of God. I'd rather scrub floors in the house of God. I'd rather be right here than to be in the tents of wickedness. Glory to God. This is how we must be. We've got to love God's place. We've got to love God's ways, God things, everything about God greater than what's in the world. As a child, we see David clinging to God. As a shepherd boy, we see him clinging to God. As a warrior, we see David clinging to God. And as a king, we sure enough see him clinging to God. If a king can cling, you and I can cling. He was in a high place, a high place of authority, and yet he loved God. Yet he clung to God. What does that say to you and me? That says to us that we should be passionate about God, that we should be clinging to God right here in the positions and the places that he placed us in. We should be loving and adoring God. Our hearts should be set on loving God. And this is how we must be in the kingdom. This is how we must be in our walk. This is how we must be in this day and time so those other things won't get in, get into the filters of our life and try to pull us off course and get us to go astray. We got to fill ourselves up with him, plugging in little thing that seeks to come in and try to take God's place in our heart. We got to fill it up with him so the devil won't come in and try to take our hearts away from God. I pray we be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I pray we be invigorated with God's strength, that we have a zeal for him, that we will fight for our worship and our time for clinging with God. I pray that our passion increase in God to want this in our lives. Amen. In so many verses that he put out in Psalms, he's telling us over and over that he'd rather have God than silver and gold. He'd rather have God than anything and anybody else. He had a heart sold out to God and no one could stop him from clinging to his God. He would call God, my God. He would say, God is my God. He will make God personal to him. And that's who he is to you. And that's who he is to me. He is our personal God. Sometimes just call him my God. Sometimes just call him your God, because that is who he is to us. Amen. That is who he should be to us. Make him personal today. Make him personal. We've got to love God this hard. 
And in my opinion, Hannah, number three, she is definitely a giant who clung to God. She clung to God in her faith. She clung to God in her prayer walk. Her story is found in 1 Samuel chapters 1 and 2. Go and read those chapters. She would not move off of her faith in God. She was constantly teased and bullied by another wife because she couldn't have children. But in the end, we see that God was saving her to bring forth his prophet. He was using her and causing her to wait so that he could bring forth his man of God, the prophet Samuel. But even through all of the frustration, and she would not put on boxing gloves. She would not fight the person who was fighting her. She would not fight Penina. She would not fight her enemy. Instead, she became a prayer warrior. And she took that situation to God in prayer. And she asked him to bless her with a son. She would not fight her enemy in the physical. She would not fight her enemy verbally. Uh-uh. She kept quiet. She took it to God in prayer. She took it to the Lord of hosts. The fighting God is what she called him. She called on the fighting God. She called on the Lord of hosts. She took her situation to God in prayer and God answered her. In his time, he caused her to birth forth a son, the prophet Samuel. And she gave the living God praise. She is a giant for clinging to God because she took it to God in prayer. And that's how we must be. We must learn. We've got to learn how to take everything to God in prayer. Every person, every situation, even our emotions, y'all, and our feelings. We have got to take everything that we're feeling or going through to God in prayer because he is our God and he cares. Amen. There are so many more giants in scripture who clung to God. These are just three of my favorites, three that I wanted to share today, who clung to God, who stayed close to God, who made their relationships with God priority. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you are the living word. I thank you that you are the living bread. I thank you that you are the bread of life. You give to us strength. You give to us peace. You give to us purpose. You give to us determination. So Father, I thank you today for everyone listening on the sound of my voice. I pray that their lives be blessed. I pray that you cause their hearts to cling to you. I pray you cause their hearts to adore you, Lord. Your word says to draw nigh to you and you will draw nigh to us. Bless us to draw nigh, Lord. Bless us to draw close, Father. And bless us to cling to you, Lord God, and not let go. Bless us to cling to you for our family. Bless us to cling to you for our homes. Bless us to cling to you for our situations. Bless us to lift everything up to you in prayer. And give us courage and give us a zeal and give us a mighty strength to trust in you, Lord, like never before. Your word says that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Father, bless us to dwell today and bless us to dwell with you richly. Draw us to your secret place. Cause our hearts to come to you, Lord. Cause our hearts to adore you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just ask God to come into your heart. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I want to know you as my Lord. I want you to become my Lord. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Rip out, remove everything that's unlike you. And God will do it. He is a faithful God. He is a strong God. He comes to seek and save the lost. He's not willing that any should perish. And that includes you and me. Amen. I pray that you were blessed and encouraged by this message. Hit the like button, subscribe, leave us an encouraging comment. We will always be praying for you here at Staying Further. Until next time, y'all be blessed and have an amazing day.